So this is the PowerPoint that I gave, oh, about a month ago to the Linden Hills History Study Group. And this was the fourth in a series uh, where I went out and I took, I, I took vintage photos and then I took the same view uh, as close as I could get today. And I had done them and I and presented them all to you as well on the Como Harriet, um, Nicollet Avenue, Bryant Avenue, and now this one is Lake Street. And we're just gonna go Lake Street from the city limits on the West End all the way over to the river. And so here we are on top of the bridge that crosses what was the Milwaukee Road and the Minneapolis and St. Louis is now crossing over the Midtown Greenway and uh, the uh, new Green Line light rail. And so you're looking west, uh, the second stoplight up here is France Avenue, which is the, the city limits. And of course, this was the uh, St. St. Louis Park line. And this is the photo, the vintage photo. And this is uh, in the process of replacing the first bridge. You can see it's 1916. And there was a wood bridge that was replaced with the first concrete bridge, which I think many of us were actually remember. And then that was later replaced by the present bridge. And what this did is it, it split the line. You can see the track. Uh, there was a single track on the side here. And so this is a shuttle car that's running in from St. Louis Park. Uh, and this was one of those that they double ended in order that they could shuttle. And then people had to ride out from Minneapolis, walk across the bridge and get on the shuttle car during this uh, uh, construction period. And so as you move in, this is the Calhoun Beach Club. And the streetcar essentially uh, was in the two center lanes of the street. And here's what that looked like. Hmm. And uh, the double tracking here, whoops. The double tracking here uh, happened when the Calhoun Beach bathhouse went in. And so this is where the bathhouse was on the North Shore of Lake Calhoun. And this is what it looked like. And when this was built in about 1912 or 13, um, there was so much demand to go to it that they had to double track the segment from uptown out to here and put in Ys at both ends and run extra shuttles uh, to handle the load. And this is a photo uh, that shows the, the beach house, the bath house, looking towards the North Shore. And you can see a streetcar over here on the right and you can see another streetcar over here on the left, but it was a pretty big deal. And so now we're on going around the north side of Lake Calhoun. And this is what it looked like before the double tracking. Here you have the old center poles that they used to have. And uh, the track here was originally laid by the Minneapolis Land and Investment Company, this uh, early uh, independent operation that even though it was uh, related to Lowry and Calvin Goodrich, ran independently. And uh, the goal of it was to um, develop land out in the St. Louis Park. And here along the north side of Lake Street, you see the big ice houses that took ice off Lake of the Isles and Cedar Lake, Cedar Lake Ice Company. Now, I think I showed you this already. The um, St. Louis Park Line didn't come in on Lake Street into Uptown. It came in on Lagoon Avenue. And in 1915, these apartments were built and uh, they were directly opposite the Y where uh, people would, uh, where not only the extra cars to Calhoun Beach would uh, turn, but anybody who was transferring off Lake Street or off Como Harriet or any of the other lines would walk over a short block and get on the St. Louis Park cars. And so they put in the streetcar waiting shelter, which is in really good shape. But you can see it's a streetcar waiting shelter. So uh, now we switch over to the Selby Lake Line. This is the map of the Selby Lake Line from one of the old mini gazettes showing uh, that it ended at Lake and Girard. And you can see all the lines that it connected with all the way over to the river. Now this is the block well, at Holmes Avenue, one block west of Hennepin. And there weren't any streetcars on uh, Lake Street in this section, but there were buses. Uh, this is a photo that came from the Minneapolis uh, um, Engineering Department. And this is the Deep Haven Bus Company. Uh, this was an independent bus company. There were oh seven or eight of these little independent bus companies that served the suburbs and ran into the city. 
And this one started in Deep Haven and ran all the way in on Minnetonka Boulevard, which of course turned into Lake Street and then took Hennepin Avenue to downtown. This right here is the replacement for the St. Louis Park streetcar, the number 17 bus. And you can see we got a Christian science reading room and a hasty tasty cafe and the rainbow cafe, all kinds of cool stuff. Now here we are at Lake and Hennepin as it exists today. All the buildings on the north side of the street are vintage um, as is the corner building, but the others are not. And here's the same spot. And this I'm guessing is a Como Harriet car that is, or an Oak Harriet car that is deadheading back to Nicollet Station somehow, because normally they were not here. Now we're a block east of Hennepin. This is the corner of Girard. Uh, the former Stella's Fish Cafe had just closed. And this is what it looked like when that was the Calhoun Theater. And you may recall that a couple, a couple issues ago in Twin City Lines, I described how they wide out the Selby Lake cars uh, over time. And initially, uh, what they did is they wide out in the intersection of Lake and Hennepin and came back. And uh, the problem with that was you had street cars lying out in the intersection of Lake and Hennepin, which was pretty congested. So then what they did is they built the Y on Girard and they would go into Girard and then back down into in the westbound lane of Hennepin and simply sit there, taking their layover right before the intersection. And then it would, when it was time to leave, if you look carefully, you can see a crossover here. And they would run against traffic for a couple hundred feet and cross over and go. And they did that up until World War II, which just amazes me. Because here there was a streetcar sitting in the middle of the street, not doing anything. Well, they had... Um, Earlier than that, they had put in a second Y to a substation about half a block north of here on Girard. And so they did what they should have done before, which was pull in here, Y out at the, at the substation, and then lay over on southbound Girard, and then uh, turn on to uh, Hennepin, uh, pardon me, turn on to uh, uh, Lake Street to go. Passengers then who were transferring had to walk the short block, but it wasn't too big of a deal. Now we're turning the corner, uh, I'm sorry, we're looking the other way. And this is the current empty, empty uh, lot that is between Girard and Fremont. And here's what was there before. It was a Plymouth and Dodge dealer. J Jacobson, Plymouth, ah, how does it do that? Jacobson, Plymouth and Dodge. And you can see there were a whole bunch of small buildings along there. Okay, now we're down at Lake and Lindale and we're looking west. And this is where they crossed, uh, well, they didn't cross the Brian Johnson line. The Brian Johnson line came down Lindale, turned on the lake for two blocks to Bryant where that stoplight is and then went south. And uh, the corner building uh, is a survivor as are the buildings on the left. Here's the newspaper photo showing that corner building. It was a drugstore. It kind of looks like there's another drugstore over on this corner too, a uh, shoe store. And this is a Bryant Johnson car that has derailed trying to make the corner. And so of course it's backed everything up. Here you see the service truck from Nicholas Station trying to go and figure out how to get the thing back on the track. This is looking the other way. And uh, this building goes way, way back. There's a lot of vintage buildings here. And here it is in about 1910. And one of the things you'll notice, and I'm gonna go back here, see how all the wires were on huge poles above the street. And of course here they aren't, they've been buried. And I think this was part of what they called the city beautiful movement, where they were trying to get rid of a lot of ugly <laughs> overhead wires. I think they so started using better little... switchboards too. So they cut down the number of individual wires. Yes. And is that a little pony cart on the left? No, uh, not well over there. That's something else. I was looking at the little one. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. seems to be a little carriage. Clearly, this is before automobile. Um, the line was opened in 1905, so this is somewhere in that in that decade. 
Okay, now we're down at Lake and Grand. And uh, the Grand Avenue line came out Nicola to, uh, to Lake, and then went several, I think four blocks over to Grand Avenue and then turned south. And so these buildings right here still stand. And here's what they looked like. You can see the switches for turning on to Grand and Grand Monroe used the lightweight cars. Now we're, um, this is the intersection at this traffic light of Lake and Blaisdell, and we're looking east. And if you talk about uh, an area where the present day simply doesn't compare with what was there, this is what was there. And there were two movie theaters here, the Vogue and the American Theater, and just all kinds of storefronts directly behind these storefronts. And here you can actually see it are the lights for uh, Nicollet Ballpark. The ballpark fence ran right up to the rear of the commercial buildings. And uh, you also wind up remembering that the entire street was brick. Brick and, of course, Belgian block for the streetcars. Now we're at Lake and Nicollet, and this is the sad, for, sad former parking lot of the grocery store and the Kmart, which this thing never was full of cars ever. Um, and of course, when they closed Nicollet, now they're trying to unclose it. Um, and this was what was there before. And here you have all the special work of the Nicollet Avenue line crossing. And then you go down to the next transfer point and that's 4th Avenue. And 4th Avenue is where the stoplight is and that was the 4th Avenue line crossing. Both these buildings are vintage, although this one has been given this particularly ugly kind of gravel, gravel treatment on the front, but it was a Pontiac dealership. Go back and look at it. There's a lot of Hispanic businesses there now. Now we've moved east to the corner of Park Avenue and we have more vintage buildings here. You can see 35W crossing in the distance and there's that cold storage building again. Now, this next picture, there's an unusual little streetcar thing in here. Here you see those same buildings to the left. But if you look at the car stop sign, it's an unusual one. It says Sunday only. It's a Sunday only car stop. And the reason that there's a stop there was that down the next street, the street uh, that's Oakland, I believe, let's see, Park, Oakland. No, I think it would have been Columbus, uh, which is behind. There was a church down at 31st, one block away. And so they did a lot of church business on the streetcars. And so they put a Sunday only stop uh, in order to let people off there. Of course, this is Lake in Chicago, Midtown Exchange, the former Sears building. And there were buildings here until the George Floyd riots, and that's when these things went down. Uh, and so this is what you had there before. Of course, this is the crossing of the Chicago uh, Avenue line. Now on the Lake Street line, um, every line had what, it called, what they called the maximum load point. And the maximum load point is where they would put checkers out uh, load checkers to see how full the cars were because this is what they really went and uh, wrote the rush hour schedules off of. Uh, they wanted to make sure they had enough room on the cars. Well, on Lake Street, because riders got on and off, on and off, on and off all along, um, the maximum load point was Chicago Avenue. And um, even uh, with Metro Transit, there, uh, back before COVID, there were 3,000 people a day transferring a lake in Chicago. So I'm sure it was much bigger than that uh, when the streetcars were running. Looks like 1440 there had a close encounter with something. Yeah, yeah, scrape something. <laughs> okay, now we're going down to the next transfer point, which is Lake and Bloomington. Of course, this is one of the centers of, uh, of Hispanic businesses. And so you see it's gotten very colorful. Um, You'll remember this next picture because I put this on the cover of Twin City Lines a couple of issues ago. I love this picture. So the Bloomington Avenue line crossed here. I'm sorry, somebody say something. Okay. Uh, and this was the Keller Drug Store. Um, 
and all kinds of neat small businesses along here, bowling alley. And then if you turn around from where we're standing, this is what it looks like today. And here's a news photo because you can see a fire truck and all the streetcars are backed up. But there was another movie theater, a paint store, all kinds of stuff here. Oops. So the uh, next a quarter mile away is the intersection of Lake and Cedar, which had two lines on it, the 28th Avenue line and the 34th Avenue line. And so, um, this building is still there. There it is, Cedar Lake Floral. And once again, you can see the special work, including the turning track, because when these cars pulled in, they pulled in the Lake Street Station, which is half a mile behind us here. And so uh, next beyond Cedar is the Pioneer Cemetery, where apparently uh, I read there is no living person who is related to anybody who is buried in the cemetery. But there's a volunteer group that helps keep it up. And it does look a whole lot different than it did back then. So now we're turning the corner from where we were. This is 21st Avenue. And you can see the Lake and Hiawatha LRT station in the distance. Everything here is brand new. Here's what it was. Uh, you had used car lot, and then you had the Lake Street uh, Station car house on the left. Doesn't that look like every used car lot in the world? Yes, it does. What's well, interesting is there's still a couple of little small used car lots on East Lake Street that are of all that's left of all the automotive stuff. But you can see before this was a Plymouth and DeSoto dealer. So once again, you move uh, about a block east, and this is what you see, and, and the High Lake Shopping Center, but this is what was there. It was Lake Street Station. And the reason High Lake is there is they tore the station down in 53 and replaced it with the little shopping center. Okay, so now we're at Lake and Hiawatha. There actually is no printing on the street, but this is a Google Street Views picture. Um, and you, you see Hiawatha, Highway 55 crossing, and then the light rail is just beyond it. This is the Milwaukee Road. This is the Milwaukee Road. And uh, this is the line that goes out to Minnehaha Park. And this was actually the second railroad in Minnesota. It was built in 1864. And in 1865, it actually connected to the rest of the national rail system for the first time uh, down at Marquette, Iowa to have a through route to Chicago. And uh, here, here's the same view then. Okay, now we're, uh, this is almost uh, the same location looking east. And uh, this is at Minneapolis's Snelling Avenue. And this is, the, this is the bus shelter that's by Target. And you're looking east towards Minnehaha Avenue. And this of course was where uh, the Minneapolis Moline plant was. And this is a labor strike, a newspaper photo, uh, and the street, the street cars are backed up. And now here we are in the epicenter of uh, the George Floyd riots. This is at 27th Avenue, and this is Minnehaha Avenue over here. And of course, a whole lot of stuff isn't there anymore. But this AutoZone store is... And here's what it looked like before. And you can see the big Minneapolis Moline plant dominating the whole corner. Some kind of a little burger place right here. This is the uh, Minnehaha Avenue line at 27th Avenue. And kind of a neat Mercury. Okay, now we're down at 31st Avenue. There's no streetcar crossing here, but there was kind of an interesting thing at the time. And it was an ornamental iron place. And this was one of three streetcars uh, that got wrapped uh, or painted in uh, for promotional. This one was during the Korean War and uh, advocating everybody choosing a career in the military. 
Then you move a few blocks further and you're down to the last transfer point on Lake Street, which is 36th Avenue. This is the East 25th Street line that went to, all the way to the Ford plant. This is the uh, former El Lago Theater. And you'll recognize this picture because um, I ran this in the Jerry Olson issue because he was like an usher or kind of a miscellaneous helper guy at the El Lago Theater. Whoops. And here you see the 36th Avenue line crossing. If you turn around in the other direction at this intersection, there was a White Castle here. They tore it down and replaced it with a Tim Hortons, a Tim Hortons that promptly went out of business. And here's what the streetcar looks coming like coming in the other direction. And so two more, about two more stops. The next one is the American Rug Laundry, which has really been a fixture on East Lake Street at uh, 43rd Avenue South. And there's the American Rug Laundry back in the streetcar days. And then finally, the bridge across the Mississippi. And there's the old one with the wood, wood uh, sidewalk. So there you go, that's it.